In 2022, there is a key difference in entry-level graphics cards that we've never seen before in the land of PC gaming, at least with desktops. And that is that your entry-level graphics cards like your RX 6500 XT and now your RTX 3050 have less PCIe lanes available for use. And what I mean by this is, in the case of the RX 6500 XT, is that even though it's got a 16X lane adapter that plugs into your PC, it actually only utilizes four of those lanes. And in the case of the RTX 3050, it only utilizes eight. As opposed to say an RTX 2060, which we've got in our hands here, and we're going to be including in today's performance numbers, this has a true 16 lanes. However, the manufacturers like AMD and Nvidia, they would have you believe that this is absolutely no problems since they're using PCIe Generation 4, which is faster than the previous PCIe Generation 3 by double the speeds roughly. So this means that on the RTX 3050, if you're using PCIe Generation 4, that is gonna be basically no difference between PCIe Generation 3 with 16 lanes. And in the case of AMD and the RX 6500 XT, I don't know what they were thinking. So this then got me thinking, if you're building a new gaming PC this year, or if you simply want to upgrade your graphics card to one of these new entry level variants, how much performance are you going to be leaving on the table if you're just using PCA Generation 3 or even PCA Generation 2? Well, the answer may shock you. Let's get into the numbers right after this sponsor spot. Are you tired of seeing this annoying activate Windows message? Then if so, today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $14 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get activated today. Works for Windows 11 Pro too. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And in today's video, we have two different test beds that we are going to be testing these graphics cards on. The first being the i3-12100F, and Z690 motherboard. This supports PCA Generation 4, so it's going to be a best case scenario for the RTX 3050 and the RX 6500 XT. Though on the value side of PC gaming, we have an i7-4770K and also a Z97 motherboard. Now this motherboard supports both PCA Generation 3 and 2, so we'll be able to get you guys some very clear numbers just by running these benchmarks. So with that aside, let's get testing and then come back to the numbers. So now that the gaming numbers are done, I can quickly tell you guys without a doubt, never try to get a 6500 XT and a PCA Generation 2 motherboard. You're gonna have nightmares when it comes to some titles. And we'll pull up Apex Legends, the first title here, where although the average FPS looked like it was still okay on the 6500 XT, and this was at 1080p high settings, we could see that the 1% and 0.1% lows were abysmal. That is, there was massive stuttering, not just in the game, but in the menu system, it could barely move to the point where I couldn't even properly select items to lock in because it went down to three FPS in the menu, and then in the game, it just went down to some real bad stuttering levels. And if you're in a clutch play, this could mean the difference between the win and the loss. Though contrasting that to the RTX 3050, this didn't suffer the same problem, and the RTX 2060 scored the best results. And it was funny to see that even with a 4770K and 16 gigabytes of DDR3, we were getting better numbers on PCA Generation 2 with the RTX 2060 than we were with the RTX 3050 with an i3-12100F and 32 gigabytes of DDR4. So in other words, used value still has a lot to bring to the table even in 2022. But let's move on to some other titles now where we got Fortnite at high settings. And here's where we scored over 100 average FPS on PCA Gen 4 with both the 3050 and 2060 but then when we went down to PCA Gen 3 and 2, that was only then where the RTX 2060 did the best here. And when it came to the RX 6500 XT, in this particular title, it just performed absolutely horrible across all different PCA generations, even PCA Gen 4. So this graphics card, especially when it comes to multiplayer titles, is just having a hard time running 
And that's not just due to the PCIe lanes being limited to 4X, that's also due to the fact that it's got a 64-bit wide bus memory configuration, which does hamper performance, especially in multiplayer titles. And here we tested at 1080p high, just like Apex Legends, because a lot of gamers, they like to get a little bit of eye candy, but not max out ultra performance and lose all that extra performance. So high settings is very popular amongst gamers, even those who are competitive in multiplayer. So moving through Horizon Zero Dawn, here's where PCIe Gen 2 started to limit the RTX 3050 and 6500 XT, in that both these configurations on these newer graphics cards saw the FPS drop much more than it did on PCIe Gen 2 with the RTX 2060, meaning that you are leaving a bit of performance on the table if you are going with these newer graphics cards and say either a value or older used motherboard. Though for what it's worth, the average FPS and the 1% point percent lows were all fine across all three different graphics cards across all three generations of PCIe. Though the last title for you guys is F1 2020 and here's where the RTX 3050 scored considerably well across all three different generations. And then the RX 6500 XT did okay on PCA Gen 4 and 3, but then moving down to Gen 2, it started to choke hard, especially in the case of the 0.1% lows. Then moving to the RTX 2060, that had absolutely no problems across all three configurations. Though it is important to note with the RTX 2060 that even on a PCIe Generation 4 motherboard, it is still running at PCIe Generation 3 16X. So what you're seeing in the RTX 2060 numbers here is simply a comparison ultimately between 16 gigabytes of DDR3 on a 4770K versus 32 gigabytes of DDR4 on an i3-12100F. So what we'll do here, put in the average FPS across these four games, across the three generations of PCIe, across the three different graphics cards. And what you'll see here is the RTX 2060 is performing the most consistent. The RTX 3050 isn't bad. It's not going to perform horribly like the RX 6500 XT did on PCA Gen 3 and Gen 2. So in other words, here's the line when it comes to entry level graphics cards. Nvidia managed to just step above that line with the 3050, but AMD with the RX 6500 XT managed to drop below the bar. And so I feel like this graphics card, even in Australia, it's justified as to why it's still sitting on the shelves, even at MSRP pricing, weeks after launch. But for me personally, the biggest highlight of today's video is that an RTX 2060, at least at its current used street pricing, these can roughly be picked up for around 550 Aussie dollars. That is what I paid for the one that we're using in today's comparison. And there's also one locally here just when I'm checking today's video that's priced around this level too, which still comes under that of the upmarked RTX 3050, which was supposed to cost around 430 Aussie dollars where I am locally when it was released, but they're all the way up to around 600 Aussie dollars. And so if you're thinking about getting something like a B450 motherboard with PCA generation three, or perhaps there's a used motherboard on the market like the Z97 that we featured in today's video, or really any generation of motherboard that represents good value, especially compared to the new stuff, then you'll have a better time going with an RTX 2060 and saving some money as opposed to going with these two new entry-level graphics cards. And so for me personally, it is a little bit sad to see that both AMD and Nvidia have skimped out on these graphics cards in 2022, when from what I've read with reports, it would have only have cost them literally an extra few pennies to add in full X16 support to these graphics cards. And so in my opinion, if AMD and Nvidia did add these 16 lanes to both these cards, it would have just given gamers a lot more options when it came to building a new gaming PC and especially saving some money and going with a more budget oriented motherboard and CPU combo. Though sadly, the final thing that we'll talk about with the RX 6500 XT was it had the potential to be a great budget option and alleviate a lot of the issues that gamers were facing that couldn't afford the more higher price cards or didn't want to go with the used GPU. However, AMD did decide to skimp out on this card and that means not only is the performance going to get nerfed like we showed in today's video, but there's also other features missing on this card like the media encoder and also another problem that I ran into when I tried to sell one of these in a gaming PC 
was that when the person went to buy it, they had a DVI monitor. And since this only has HDMI and display adapter, usually I'd get around this by using a cable that converts HDMI into DVI. And unfortunately, when I went to do this, it gave out a blue screen and I couldn't get around it. So I actually had to sell them a different PC. So that is even another problem that comes about when you just skimp too much on your graphics card and take away with basic features. And there's also even a bigger problem with the media encoder in that a lot of web browsers utilize what's called GPU acceleration. And what this means is it'll then offload that GPU encoding to the CPU, which the CPU doesn't traditionally do anywhere near as good as a job as the GPU will do. And so basically your fan could just be ramping up and going full speed even while you're browsing the net. Anyhow guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section below what are your thoughts about these two new entry-level graphics cards? And also, would you pick an RTX 2060 over both these other graphics cards? Now, I did include only the RTX 2060. I know some people are like, we should have included the RX 580 and stuff like that. It's all gonna lead down to the same path in that those graphics cards also have X16 as opposed to these two newer cards, which don't. So basically, what I'm trying to say is in conclusion from this video is that try and get an older graphics card if you're going with a motherboard with PCIe Gen 3 or 2. And you're just going to be having a smoother experience. And in my opinion, you're going to be getting better value for money. Though love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Hayden Lambert. And they ask, I want your life. Love heart. Stuck in South Australia, no computer stores and where I'm around, barely anyone to talk PC to. How do you make your money? I guess flipping PCs, but where do you advertise them? How do you sell them? Could you give us a rundown? So thanks for the very direct question. And I make money just from doing a heap of different things, YouTube and PC flipping, and I've divulged all this in the past. I do make money off all these things. But when it comes to selling a PC, I do advertise on my local marketplaces. However, lately I have had a lot of demand just via word of mouth. So a lot of times I don't even get time to list the PC because someone's booked up that particular PC from me behind the scenes. So hopefully that answers that question. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the videos as soon as they drop. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.